Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be making a Frankenstein's Monster style kind of patchwork Warhammer Orc Kit Bash. Rather than creating a wire armature for this project, I decided to mix up some milliput and make a loose torso shape that I would use as a kind of foundation to build upon for the rest of the miniature. The first pieces that I want to add were some larger pieces of like armor plating. So I take this one piece that's probably from some orc vehicle and cut it into two halves. And then after cleaning up my cuts, as well as doing a little bit more trimming, I can attach it to the main torso while the milliput hasn't quite set yet. And then since I want to be adding some details that are going to be coming underneath this front uh, piece of armor plating, I actually take some of my sculpting tools and push it out from the rest of the torso a little bit. I then take the rest of the armor plating that I had left over and attach that to the back of the torso. Again, using some of my rubber sculpting tools to make sure that there's a good bond between the milliput and the piece of plastic that I've added. The next thing that I wanted to work on was the arm. So I took all of these different little bits from some orc sets that I got and then I chopped those guys up so that they could fit together as one kind of larger forearm. And then I attach all of those pieces together using some plastic glue. What I was trying to accomplish with this arm was to create, uh, using some of the pieces from the power claws that you can get some from the orc sets, take those claws and attach it around this big old saw that I had chopped off so that you can have a claw that also had like a saw coming out of it that is, ends up being not very practical, but very orcish. Once I had assembled all these parts, I kind of started to notice that it was looking very flat since I had added just a bunch of flat pieces onto it. So I assembled a couple extra little bits that I added onto the side of it to give it a little bit more three dimensionality. And that really helped make this arm look a little bit more interesting to look at. With that complete, all I needed to do was figure out how I would attach this forearm onto the miniature itself. So I took a couple extra little pieces that I had as well as some 5mm plastic uh, styrene tubing that I would use as kind of pipes that would be attaching it onto the shoulder of my main miniature, which I attached to the rest of the arm using more of the plastic glue, which for those of you who don't use plastic glue, you really should, because for conversions, it's super helpful to be able to have a significantly stronger bond between all the little things that you add. Because I found with super glue, even the miniatures that I assembled that weren't conversions, they just tended to fall apart. And so to add a little bit more interest to the two pipes that I added here, I decided I would also chop up some of the little shoulder pads that come with some of the orc kits that had some bullet holes in it. And I actually glue that onto the piping to look like it had broken and they had to patch it up a little bit. And I thought that that helped make it look, again, more ramshackle, more orky, and less refined. To attach the arm to the rest of the body, I take some more milliput and make kind of a shoulder joint that the two pieces of styrene can attach into and then blend that all together using more of my rubber sculpting tools to make it look a little bit harder to see so that I can cover it up later on a little bit more easily. For the next part that I wanted to work on, I was going to add a gun for his other arm. But since it was kind of like a uh, Frankenstein's monster conversion, I decided that rather trying to chop off a gun and make another arm, I just decided he would have two arms attached to his one side carrying the gun. And this really helps with the kind of Frankenstein's monster feel of the miniature, as well as just making it so much easier to convert. Since as you can see me doing here, I just have to assemble the gun as normal and attach the two arms. Uh, not having to worry about like cleaning up the extra hand on the weapon and then using more milliput I go ahead and attach both of those pieces onto the rest of the torso Again smoothing that out to add space for the details that will be covering all of the seams Then this is the part of the project that's a little bit tricky to film Because it's just a lot of the same thing over and over again just taking a bunch of little orc bits and bobs here and there and gluing them around the project, covering up all the parts of the milliput and little seams that I don't want anybody seeing. As you can see here, I started by adding a bunch of pieces onto the back of this guy to cover up the very exposed uh, like upper back 
shoulder part of the miniature. Here you can see me adding another detail that I liked, which was just one of the orcs seemed to have an arm that was like a javelin grappling hook type deal. And so I just basically attach that onto the back as if he has another little arm that can go and shoot somebody and drag it towards him. After that, I go ahead and take all of the little shoulder pad bits and just start covering this miniature with them. They were a great little piece that I could throw on everywhere to fill all the little gaps between the larger pieces of tech and just bits that I've added onto this miniature. And I did this with a combination of super glue as well as some of the plastic glue, just kind of depending on where the piece was and how much other of the plastic was actually around it. I tried to use the plastic glue as much as possible because I found that it had a better, more solid bond and the super glue just tend to break off once it hit something. The next part of the project was to work on the head for the miniature, or I should say heads, because I thought it'd be kind of fun for it to kind of have two heads and kind of I just like to imagine um, it kind of arguing with itself about what it's supposed to go and do. So as you can almost see here, although it's very poorly filmed, I took the same uh, styrene tubing that I used for the arms and I used that for the base of the necks. And then I also added a little bit of the smaller styrene tubing to add some extra supports and to just make the whole model look a little bit more interesting. One of which was a couple pieces that I scrounged from some of the weapons that the orcs had and basically made it actually attached to the outer plating so it kind of sticks out a little bit. And I also wanted to add another one that I actively wrapped some wire around to make it look like it had some tubing or some technical bit going around it so that it wasn't just adding a bunch of blank styrene tubes onto this guy. With the heads in place, I can continue to add some more detailing around the top of the shoulders, adding some spears and skulls and stuff like that to kind of act as almost like trophies or something. I don't know, I thought it looked kind of cool. I then also add a couple of extra pieces around where the legs are gonna join in with the rest of the body so that the legs that I build will actually have some place to attach themselves to. I decided I was going to use the main body of these power claws to act as joints and feet for the legs. So I go ahead and remove the arms from them and then clean them up using my scalpel. Then again, using some more of the plastic glue, I attach some uh, tubing that I actually cut specifically to match the shape of the um, top of the power claw body that I'm going to be using for one of the feet of this guy. And after going through a handful of iterations and ideas, I decided that one of the legs for this guy was going to be kind of like a raptor claw type deal, uh, since, especially since I had the pieces from the power claw that I could so easily attach onto this guy. So I decided to go for that kind of feel for one of the legs. And in a desperate attempt to try and make one of the joints more, uh, a little bit stronger, I took my X-Acto knife and I tried drilling a hole into it so that I could technically do some form of like pseudo pinning. Um, and doing this also made me realize I should probably just get a drill so that I don't have to ruin a blade and do a lot of work for something that isn't as good as it could be. But nonetheless, once I attached that, I could also attach that to the rest of the leg, which I had added another bar to earlier. Uh, I don't appear to have the footage where I actually attached that on, but it was again just using more of the plastic glue and not doing anything crazy or uh, groundbreaking to attach that together. After playing around with a bunch of different iterations of what I wanted to do, uh, I actually cut the little bit that I had attached the uh, foot that I had made earlier a little bit too short. So I attached this extra bit to lengthen out the leg and then I can attach that to the other half of the leg that we already attached to the rest of the mini. And then to keep things rather simple, and because I was also feeling a little lazy, I made the other leg a peg leg type style thing. So I attached a little bit of the 5mm styrene tubing onto the main body of the mini, and then took this, uh, what I believe to be either an exhaust pipe or a weapon or of some kind, and attach that onto the end of it so that it uh, has a little bit of variation. After that, I take some extra little pieces and start working on a bit of like maybe a hoofed foot by taking one of the jaw pieces from one of the orc sets and attaching it to another shoulder pad. 
attaching both of those pieces onto a small shield from, I don't even know if it's actually an orc set, but I attach those together and then once those all set and are connected, I can attach that onto the main orc itself. Using the tried and true method of using a lot of glue and just sitting it there and hoping that the whole miniature doesn't fall over, which for at least this time worked very well. After that, I just add a handful of extra little details here and there to fill out the model, and that's where I'm going to leave off this project for now. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified of when I release new videos. If you want to see this project once it's finished, you can go over to twitch.com slash magic missile minis, or there should be a link in the description if I got that wrong. Um, and right here, I believe, should be the uh, scheduled dates for when I'm going to be streaming. So don't forget to go check that out if you want to see me work on this project, finish it up, and then also start a bunch of other projects and work on those. If you haven't already, you can go check out my channel update video I released last week talking a little bit more about what's going on with the channel and why I'm switching over to Twitch, sort of, kind of, not really. It's a little complicated, so if you want, you can go check over that update video and that'll give you everything you need to know. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video again, and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.